Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm going to be building this fully custom purple iPhone 6. This iPhone has been built from the ground up using a 128GB iPhone 6 logic board and a stunning purple housing which has been paired with white antenna lines and a black LCD for a stunning one-of-a-kind iPhone. I brought this custom housing from eBay. The housing itself included nothing but the colored buttons. No small parts are included. Everything from the dock connector, flex cables to small parts such as a dock connector and headphone port surrounds were not included with the housing. Being a custom housing, finding one with these parts already installed is almost impossible. To be able to complete this iPhone, I needed a working donor logic board. I managed to find this iPhone 6 Space Gray 128GB for $160. Included with it was an Apple battery case valued at $149 and an Apple lightning dock which is valued at $75 here in Australia, as well as a tempered glass screen protector. I also picked up this donor iPhone 6 for $20, which at first didn't power on but after some simple revival turned out to be iCloud locked. For anyone attempting a housing replacement like this, I'd highly recommend having a donor iPhone to be able to take parts off in case you damage anything along the way. And that's exactly what I'm going to be using this iPhone 6 for. As you can see, I've gone ahead and already robbed the vibrate motor off of it, which I used for the iPhone 6 restoration video. I bought an iPhone 6 for $20 on eBay and was able to restore it up using some parts and you can see there that the power button cable is actually ripped on this device from a previous repair attempt and I'm going to say that is definitely from someone trying to pry up the battery after breaking the battery adhesive tabs um, and then forcefully removing the battery damaging that cable um, the power button never worked when I brought the device and the battery itself wasn't even glued down the iPhone itself was also missing many brackets and screws so I'm going to be parting this out using uh, some of the parts from this and transferring them over to the purple housing. Now I'm not actually going to be using the dock connector, although I have to remove it to reveal the smaller parts that are down the bottom of the device, um, such as some of the grills as well as the dock connector surround and headphone jack surrounds, which will be needed in the purple housing. So basically I can use a metal pry tool here just to remove those and you can see down there there is the surround that actually goes down the bottom of the lightning port. Now, unlike the iPhone 5 I did, this actually sits nice and flush with the edge of the device and has been um, obviously created at the right diameter um, with this custom housing. I know with the iPhone 5 I did, it stuck out a little bit um, and was a little bit inaccurate, but I can go ahead and install those brackets and grills from the old iPhone 6 donor phone into the purple housing. Now this whole process is quite involved. There's a lot of tiny screws and a heap of different things you need to transfer across um, to your iPhone. Everything has to be swapped over, um, all the brackets, all the screws, everything you can think of, everything that's in that housing um, down to the smallest uh, parts has to be transferred across, which is a really big pain with this. Um, and if it was a little bit simpler, then a lot of people would be able to do this. But like I said, this isn't an easy project. Now I'm going to be installing a space gray or black dock connector into this iPhone to match up with the LCD. But because this is a custom phone, you can put whatever color dock connector, whatever color buttons you want in here um, to match whatever tastes you like. Now I've gone for the black one, like I said, to match the screen. Um, but you could go with white as the antenna bars on this housing are white and if you wanted to uh, put a white screen on there I'll show you guys later on what that looks like paired up with the purple But I did end up going for the black option as I preferred it over the white once I've installed the dock connector and go ahead and make sure everything's lined up correctly and everything is in place Switching back over to the donor phone. I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these buttons um, to start work on those now you'll see this little middle spacer as well as the retaining bracket. Now there's no spot for the retaining bracket on the new purple buttons so you have to leave those off. But you need to transfer the little metal spacer and also the rubber gasket from the buttons. Now you can see here I've gone ahead and pried those off with a sort of opening tool uh, for an iPhone. You want to be very careful these things are absolutely tiny and if you lose it it's going to be very hard to find another one of those online. Although they can be purchased from places such as eBay. The first attempt to stick this on, I used some double-sided tape, but that didn't work and the button would not function in the iPhone. I ended up having to do the old super glue method, uh, and to do that I just poured a bit of super glue out and then dabbed an old screwdriver in it that was small enough um, that I could 
get it into the correct position on the button itself. There's a little hole um, that that sits in and once you dab a little bit on there, you're able to stick that spacer down onto the button. If you don't attach the spacer correctly, the buttons will not work and if you attach them dodgily and it falls off of where it's supposed to be, then the buttons will stop working in the future. Now that I've done multiple custom iPhone housings, I have to say that the buttons are the hardest part of the entire process. Everything else seems to just have its place and screws right down, but the buttons themselves need to be modified and glued in place to make things work. But now that I've got the process right, I could go ahead and remove the logic board, which gave me access to the power button, um, and then I could go ahead and glue its spacer in onto the purple button. After that was done, I could go ahead and assemble the buttons and uh, the flex cable for those buttons into the purple housing, which is what I'm doing here. Um, and make sure to test those out, make sure that they're clicking correctly, um, and also make sure that the mute switch is correctly switching between the two modes. After that, I could go ahead and proceed over to the power button flex cable, which also has a LED flash on it and a microphone for noise cancellation. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to the donor phone so I can grab the rest of the parts out of that housing and transfer them over to the new one. You can see it's now starting to take shape with the dock connector, speaker and some of the flex cables installed. I'm just going to install a lot of other smaller parts such as those clips that screw onto the side which actually hold down the LCD as well as that little uh, bracket there for the SIM card. If those aren't installed, obviously your screen's not going to sit on or your SIM card isn't going to eject. There are so many things in the iPhone that you don't really uh, realize are there or what they're doing until you pull uh, one of these things apart to actually swap out a housing because you need to take everything out of the device. Next up, I can go ahead and remove the camera from the device um, and the rest of the things up in the top of the iPhone. So once the camera comes out, there's this little bracket over the LED flash and microphone. But what we're also going to want to do is transfer over the little metal grill that's underneath the microphone. If you don't install that, there'll just be a hole in the back of the iPhone and it will look unfinished and unprofessional. Once you go ahead and install that grill, you can go ahead and clip in the LED flash and screw down the bracket and install the camera, screwing its appropriate brackets and cables in. Now that the camera is back into the iPhone, we've finished installing all of the small parts. It's time to put in a logic board and test out the iPhone to make sure that all the buttons, dock connector, and everything is working before I go ahead and install the 128GB logic board. I also had to put in the vibrate motor, which I had to purchase brand new, as I didn't have one to transfer from the old phone. Going ahead and plugging it into the charger, you can see here that it shows up with the battery flat symbol. So after letting that charge, you can see that this is what the purple iPhone would look like with a white display. And you can see there that everything seems to be functional. The buttons are working, uh, the touch is working, everything seems to be functional with the device, although this is iCloud locked on iOS 12.0 Beta 1. Uh, I actually know the person, although they're refusing to reply to my messages and help me get this unlocked. So now that we've got that established and we now know that everything we've installed is working, I can go ahead and disassemble the 128GB iPhone and take its logic board and transfer it into the purple housing. Doing it this way, I didn't actually have to take anything out of this housing, which means if I ever need to transfer it back into this housing for some reason, then I would have everything all ready to go, or I could just use this as a test housing to test out logic boards for the iPhone 6. Now obviously, when doing this, make sure to disconnect the battery. I say it in all my videos, and it's one of the most important things that you need to do before disconnecting the display. I know of many people who have fried backlights just because they're too lazy to disconnect that battery. It's two extra screws and a clip, and you can avoid frying your entire iPhone. Now that we've gone ahead and removed the display from the iPhone, I can go ahead and take off all of its parts and transfer them onto a new black LCD and one that's not cracked. When doing this, you're going to need to make sure to get the same display as the color of the iPhone. If the home button is white, you'll have to go with a white screen, and if the home button is black, you'll have to go with a black screen. The reason for that is you can't replace the button and retain Touch ID. So if you're doing this, you want to make sure that you buy the iPhone that you want to put into this device is the color of the screen that you want. For instance, I purchased this black iPhone because I wanted a black screen with my purple device. If I wanted a white screen, I'd have to buy a silver or a gold iPhone as they have the white screens with the white Touch ID sensors. 
For the new display on this iPhone, I've chosen a refurbished Apple display. That basically means that this is a used display that's previously been cracked, sent away, and had the glass repaired on the device, which means you're using an Apple original LCD, but you have a different piece of glass installed on top. I use these in almost all of my iPhone repairs and restoration videos, as they're not only affordable, but are the best quality you can get for your money. So now that we've got this screen basically all done and ready to go, we can go ahead and put that aside and start removing the logic board from the 128GB iPhone. And can be done in a pretty much similar process to before. The only difference is I'm not going to be removing any of the battery, dock connector or anything like that. I'm pretty much just going to be taking out the logic board itself and then putting the screws that actually hold that logic board back into the frame. So if I ever need to drop a logic board into this frame, I have everything that I need, including all the screws and brackets with the device. As I already have screws from the donor phone, which I'm going to be using to screw this logic board down into the purple iPhone. The logic board of the iPhone comes out quite easily and doesn't require any of the other parts to be removed from the iPhone. Once it's unscrewed and the brackets are unclipped, it falls right out of the device. Now that we have that logic board out, I can go ahead and install it into the purple iPhone. This iPhone is now starting to really take shape and is now only needing a battery and an LCD to complete the phone. The last piece of the puzzle on that logic board is to install that Wi-Fi antenna. Without the Wi-Fi antenna, you're not going to be picking up any Wi-Fi signals with your device. Once that's installed, we can go ahead and connect up the power button and volume flex cables to the logic board and start to install the brackets onto the device. After that, we can go ahead and plug in the dock connector and antenna and give the device an overall wipe over with a microfiber cloth before I can go ahead and connect the new LCD and battery for a first test. Going ahead and connecting those and pressing the power button, you can see here that the device is fully functional and everything is working from the buttons, home button, Wi-Fi, cellular, everything was tested out. Then I could go ahead and get the battery adhesive for the new battery, apply it to the back of the battery and glue it down into the iPhone. Make sure you do this after you test the device as these battery adhesive tabs are extremely difficult to remove and you risk breaking them in the removal process. Once they're in, I can go ahead and install the display bracket uh, for the LCD, which stops the connectors from coming unplugged uh, through use of the device. And then lastly, I can connect up the battery and install its appropriate brackets and screws. Once that's all done, I'm going to give a final wipe over for the device to make sure it looks very clean on the inside. Go ahead and install the display, closing everything down and installing the two pentalobe screws in the bottom, which I've opted for a silver color to match in with the silver surround on the dock connector. Next up, I'm going to install a tempered glass screen protector and we're done. So this is it, the fully custom purple and black iPhone 6 128GB. This iPhone runs iOS 10.3.1 and I purchased this whole phone for 160 bucks. and with the housing, battery and other small parts on top of that, we're probably looking at around $250. This is an iPhone 6 Purple 128GB. It has 1GB of onboard memory, an Apple A8 processor and a 4.7 inch LCD. Although I did pay around $250 all up for this, I still think this is an amazing deal considering this phone also came with that battery case, which like I said, uh, don't come cheap. They're around $150 here in Australia and a $79 Apple dock, which to be honest, is quite overpriced uh, to begin with, but once you're getting these used um, and they were included with the iPhone for a total of $160, uh, it's absolutely crazy how good a deal this actually was. And the only problem being the device had a cracked screen. This is by far the coolest iPhone in my collection as well as the coolest mod I've ever done to an iPhone. These housings can be purchased from places like eBay and AliExpress, and they come in a variety of different colors. For newer models such as the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, these housings seem to be near impossible to find. There are some out there, and if you do enough searching on the internet, you may be able to find one. 
Now this isn't the first iPhone I've done a custom color to. I've done a custom red iPhone 5 and a custom purple iPhone 4S. Let me know down below what you think of this custom purple iPhone 6. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the custom and modern tech playlist for more videos like this. I've done some custom iPhone 5s and iPhone 4Ss, as well as a MacBook Pro with a custom backlit keyboard. Also, make sure you're following my social media. Link will be in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.